Those of you that saw the message I sent out know that I was without power for about 10 days here. And um, you can see about a little over 10 days ago, um, the power went down. We lost one leg of our power to the house. And, I mean, the weather was kind of nasty out and snowy and stuff. And I wound up uh, having to, I couldn't run my pump, so we wound up having to um, learn how to flush the toilets with a bucket and also, luckily in uh, Walmart the week before, I had found a bunch of extension cords on clearance and I picked up some of them um, and got to put them to good use trying to run power to um, outlets that had power. So we, um, you know, it was kind of rough in it. We couldn't run a dryer and we do loads of laundry when we had the generator running for the pump and, um, you know, a little tough living. But then all of a sudden it got really cold out. We had like three days of... Uh, 20 below wind chills you can see it's really cold and the winds were really kicking up and it was just frigid and uh the generator won't start once it's below zero so you know we went a couple days without any uh generator or water or anything like that so um we had to rely on the buckets that we had and also at the same time we had the uh the wood stove really cranking up keeping us nice and warm here and that did a great job it kept us nice and toasty in the house and um, it just, uh, you know, it did go through quite a bit of wood in that time period. We'd um, fill this rack every day and it would be empty by, you know, the end of the day. And without water running, you could see we wind up with every every dish in the house wind up sitting there waiting until we can turn it back on and wash them all because the dishwasher wouldn't run and the pump wouldn't run. And then it got a little bit warmer out, so I got my 10 five gallon buckets up filled them up again for flushing toilets and we got the uh the racks out for the laundry and did a load of laundry and actually i had uh, some extension cords to keep my grow lights on so that helped because we had the one leg of power left then all of a sudden it went up to being 60 degrees out for a two days in a row there and uh, one day was a little cooler than that but i did get a chance to wash my truck off and the day before i had uh plowed the area where they're going to be digging for the replacement cable so um i snow blew this area out here you can see where those stakes are going out to the road uh, yesterday there was over two feet of snow there that i blew away although you can see what's left we we're trying to get the sun to get the frost out of the ground because there was 12 inches of frost in the ground at that time so i got some of the bricks and stuff cut away and things all ready for the contractor to come and um you know it's warm enough now that the generator would was easy to run and you know really we just we could get our water back and that was the only thing that we missed so it's time to start replacing everything and the contractor did a wonderful job at scheduling things um he got everything moved up to uh you know so it all happened within uh, about a week after we contacted him and power company showed up eight o'clock in the morning as he said to disconnect our power cut the cables and whatnot and uh, the contractor also showed up with uh, four men in a machine here to start digging and you can see they're digging up the starting to dig up the wire in the beginning there they did hit into the the old wire and you can see actually it was um it was not buried in conduit it was just buried and uh, there was sand around the actual cable itself it looked like so you know at the time they they did it according to i guess the codes and how it the least requirements that you can uh, do to bury it but um, you can see we got lucky the frost all came out of the ground across where they were digging um, ran into a little problem with water because the town had raised the road in front of our house about a foot a couple of years ago and um, it just they raised our driveway up too Oh, well, let's go back to this. And here you can see um, the only place they ran into that frost, there was still a foot, foot of frost in the ground, was uh, by the house where there was no snow during all that cold temperature. The shrubs kind of kept it protected there. and So they did hit some, uh, some nice, you can see there's some nice big chunks that he's been picking out with the machine there. And there's another chunk of ice. So he just pounded the machine down on it like a jackhammer a couple times and pieces would break off and he was able to pull them right out. So it didn't turn out to be too bad a job digging. 
but the um, the real problem turned into being the water like I had started saying before they uh, redid the road in front of our house and raised everything up a foot a couple of years ago and they raised our driveway up also where all the runoff used to run over our driveway and down in the ditch next door well turns out there's like a pond to run off in our front yard now and um, it just kept uh, building up as the, the day went on and it got warmer and warmer out and you can even see here everything start to, to turn to um, as it warms up everything really starting to turn to mud from all that water running down from the uh, the area up by the road there so luckily the the digging went very easy um, they had a fairly new machine here and uh, the young man that was running it was really good um, I just enjoyed sitting there watching them so I I stood out there and watched them dig most of this and you know, I did grab a couple videos you can see so uh, luckily they had called this dig safe New York that was supposed to come out and uh, you know mark out the cable cables and uh, you know where the electric was and stuff but those guys never actually showed up they just said go ahead and dig don't worry about it so you know these guys were digging kind of blind and luckily we did miss the uh, the cable so I didn't lose my internet or anything so um, and here you can see how muddy it's starting to get you can see the machine just kind of sinking down in the mud and those are big wide tracks on there so he's got to use it kind of like that trencher that I've got he uh, just uses the bucket to drag it um, for the last couple of feet of the trench here you can see he's got to get across it to um, to actually dig it just because of the the way the machine is so with that soft stuff and everything else it was kind of tricky to get it in there but you know he did manage it and uh, did a really good job so, and I must say the best thing that we did was hire a contractor that really you know knew what he was doing and he knew people and he was able to um, get everything escalated so that people from the power the engineers from the power company showed up right away and um, gave the okay to get started and then the um, he got all the electrical permits and he made all arrangements with the electrical inspector and the um, the electric department to you know just get everything done in one day and the timing was just perfect but there you can kind of get an idea of the water running and here's what the cable looks like where it broke I'll get into that later but we did find the uh, break in the cable but um, you know luckily everything was in place to get done in one day and the weather turned out to be good and there you can see they're putting the cable in some extra heavy duty conduit this time uh, it's a very heavy wall conduit that should pre prevent this from ever happening again um, and then they, uh, the electrical inspector showed up and gave the approval and um, everything they started being able to uh, go back and bury the uh, the pipe and you can see the water there luckily the guy came quick before the whole thing filled up there's over two feet of water right by the house now that's just running down from the road runoff that shouldn't be but the town like I said they messed it up so he was able to um, you know start filling this in and cut that water flow off to kind of stop it up at the end there and but you can see it is making kind of a mess the machines digging in and um, you know, everything's just so muddy now it's, it's just starting to turn into a, a muddy mess but um but uh, but you know by the time they got this this first filling done um the uh truck showed up for the uh from the electrical company luckily the guy had left his phone number and he came back to start doing the actual hookup of it so there you can see there you know they're still filling filling this back in there a little at a time and he's being real careful to not push any stones in it and another guy just kind of tight doing the final tightening up on all the clamps and checking them all um, and then they put down this red stripe about six inches underground to do the final burying with and the electric truck was uh, you know the guy was out at the pole now just uh, working to get that end of it run back up the pole in the conduit and hook back up to the main power transformer and then he just had to go back and put in the actual meter itself put that back in and seal it up and we were done for the day so here it is a little over six hours later um job was done we got lucky with the weather uh, 
you know, it was just amazing for February to get this kind of, of weather and stuff. And, you know, we did find the break and, um, there were two stones that were actually dug up, and this one here is the one that was in the area where the cable broke. So I'm guessing that pushed up through the sand and actually, you know, probably did most of the damage to the cable. So here's the cable. I brought it inside later to, you know, next day. I'm just looking at it. You can see where it, it corroded off there. It looks like cottage cheese on the end. This was about 25 feet from the pole itself and the water had wicked uh, about 80 feet down to the meter pan. It was pretty amazing how these things wick once they uh, they get broken. So you can see that the cable is just kind of it's kind of like a soft cottage cheese inside there. The aluminum actually kind of just corroded away. Guess that's why I'll never buy an aluminum truck. But here it is. I decided to peel it back a little bit and look at it and you can see the corrosion's headed up the cable but you can see there was Basically, the corrosion was the only thing carrying electric probably for, you know, quite a while there. So, it's pretty amazing how a, a cable can get this bad and just, uh, you know, just run and run and run with no signs. And then all of a sudden, stop working. It's just basically an example of how cutting the cost up front of not using conduit when they buried this cable uh, actually caused a major problem down the road. Um, and hopefully that won't happen again. And there you can see how the... The plastic coating was actually all blown out and everything in that area. So this is just one of the little unexpected surprises that you can get, you know, if you're a homeowner. And um, actually, it wound up setting us back like thirty-three hundred dollars in the end. So it wasn't as bad as it could have been. So you know, it's you never know once you own a home what what can actually happen. Glad it's all over now and I can get back to making some videos. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.